Mishnah Bura, chapter 433, we're studying Pesach, the laws concerning the examination for Chametz, Shulchan Aruch, uh, paragraph 1. The examination for Chametz must be done by candlelight and not by moonlight. If one, trans, uh, if one transgressed and did not examine for Chametz on the night of the 14th of Nisan, then when he examines by day on the 14th of Nisan, he should not examine by sunlight, but by candlelight. As for a veranda which has a lot of light, if one examined it for Chametz by sunlight, this is adequate. The same ruling applies opposite the skylight of a room. Paragraph 2. One may not examine for chametz by torchlight, but must do so by candlelight. One may not examine for chametz with a tallow candle of any kind, or with an oil lamp, but must do so with a wax candle. Rama, The candle must be single, but two candles together, even if they are intertwined, have the ruling of a torch. Paragraph 3. One must examine all the places with respect to which there are ground that may have all the rooms of the house and the lofts require examination, since occasionally someone goes into them with bread in his hand. On the other hand, storerooms for wine, when one does not avail himself of the wine and likewise, rooms where straw is kept in similar places do not require examination. Paragraph 4. The holes in the walls of the house and the projections which, are, which jut out of the walls, which are not very high and not very low, are required to be examined for chametz. However, those which are so high that a person's hand does not reach there and those which are so low that they are less than three handbreadths from the ground are not required to be examined for chametz. Paragraph 5. The roofs, the roofs of a hut and of a tall cabinet are sleeping roofs. For this reason, these roofs are not suitable for any use. Therefore, they do not need to be examined for chametz even if they are inside a house. Paragraph 6. A cattle stable is not required to be examined for chametz, since if there was any chametz there, the animals will, animals will have eaten it. Likewise, a chicken coop is not required to be examined for chametz, since if there was any chametz there, the chickens will have eaten it. Similarly, the middle of a courtyard does not need, need to be examined for chametz, since if there was any chametz there, the ravens and other birds which are to be found there will have eaten it. The above ruling only applies where one is in doubt as to whether or not there was chametz in these places. However, it does not apply if there was definitely chametz there. Rama, On the other hand, it is stated below in section 445 paragraph 3 that it is permitted to throw away chametz in a place where birds are to be found. It follows that one is certainly not required to dispose of chametz there even when there is definitely chametz there until after the time has arrived when it has become forbidden. Paragraph 7. When there is a hole in the dividing wall between the home of one Jew and the home of his fellow, each one should examine it for chametz as far as his hand reaches, and may nullify the remaining chametz in his hut, and this is adequate. When there is a hole in the dividing wall between the home of a Jew and the home of a non-Jew, the Jew is not required to examine it for chametz at all. This is because there is a fear that the non-Jew may conclude that the Jew is employing witchcraft against him and the Jew will thus come to be in danger. Paragraph 8. If the holes of a wall were used for chametz and the wall collapsed and formed a heap, then, even if the heap does not have a height of three handbreadths, which is the range of a dog's digging, it is necessary to examine for chametz underneath it. Since examining a heap involves danger from a scorpion, as scorpions are common in heaps, we are afraid that after one has completed his examination so that he is no longer occupied with the performance of a mitzvah, he may search for a needle which he lost and will come to be in danger. This ruling applies generally. If, however, one knows that there is chametz underneath the heap, then if the chametz does not have a height of three handbreadths over it, he must take it out of there with a hoe and a pick, and in such a way that there will be no danger. If there is a height of three handbreadths over the chametz, he should nullify it in his heart, and this is adequate. Paragraph 9. In a cellar where one arranges rows of wine casks, casks one next to the other, until the entire area of the cellar becomes full of casks, and then arranges again other rows over the bottom rows until the ceiling is reached, the ruling is as follows. 
It is ne unnecessary to examine more than the highest row and another row below, below it. What is meant is a single row along the width of the cellar and a single row below it. That is, one is not required to examine the casks over the entire area of the cellar, but merely the highest row which faces the ceiling and the, in and the entrance to another row below it. Paragraph 10. Synagogues and Batamid Rush are required to be examined for chametz because the children take chametz into them. If someone sweeps his room on the 13th of Nisan, having in mind to examine it for chametz and dispose of the chametz, he finds and he is careful not to bring chametz there any more, he must nevertheless examine the room for chametz on the night of the 14th of Nisan. Ramah, everybody must sweep his rooms before the examination. The pockets or sleeves of garments into which chametz is put occasionally are required to be examined for chametz. Okay, now the Mishnah Brewer's commentary. Point one by candlelight. The examination must be done on the night of the 14th of Nistan. Day. He must examine again on the on the fourteenth of Nisan, ordainment of the sages. Nevertheless, it appears that in such a case one should not make a blessing over the examination. For the event, he will have not fulfilled obligation with the first examination that he made during the day. However, if one examined for chametz on the night of the 13th of Nisan by candlelight, so that the examination was done at night at a time when candlelight was excellent for the examination, and he was meticulously careful not to bring in chametz later, he does not need to examine for chametz again. This is agreed to by the majority of the Acharonim. If someone wishes to be stringent with himself in such a case and examine for chametz again, he should, take, he should at any rate not make a blessing over the examination then. So, if one transgressed and did not make an examination. However, note two. However, initially it is forbidden to put off the examination until the day of the 14th of Nisan, as explained above. Point three, by candlelight. So, not by sunlight, but by candlelight. And this is because by candlelight one can search well in, in hiding places, holes and crevices. Point four, as for a veranda, by this the Shulchan Aruch means a place which has three walls and a roof. Such a place has a lot of light because of the fourth side which is completely open. Point five, if one examined it by sunlight. This ruling as well refers to an instance when one transgressed and did not examine on the night of the 14th of Nisan and examines instead on the day of the 14th of Nisan in the case of a veranda which has a lot of light, a candle is unnecessary then, but the sunlight is adequate. The reason why the author of the Shulchan Aruch words this with reference to an instance when it is after the event is not because a candle should rather be used, but because initially one must also examine a veranda on the night of the 14th of Nisan. It is clear from the Gemara that if someone did not examine for chametz at night and must examine for it by day, he must do the examination in the morning because the brisk perform mitzvah as early as possible. He should not eat before he has done the examination. Point six. So by sunlight on a veranda, this is adequate. Uh, as to whether or not it is permitted to examine a veranda for, uh, for chametz on the day of the 13th of Nisan by the light of the sun, the ruling is that initially it is forbidden. Instead, one must, one must wait for the night of the 14th of Nisan before he, examines, before he examines it. If one did examine a veranda on the 13th of Nisan so that it is now after the event, it appears that it is unnecessary to examine it a second time. Uh, See the MA at the end of this section who writes that one must at any rate examine at least one room again at night. See there. The uh, MA was Magen Abraham. Note 7. Opposite the skylight of a room. A skylight is defined as an opening for light in the middle of the roof. However, a corresponding ruling applies opposite the windows in the walls. On the other hand, this ruling only applies to the area actually opposite the skylight or actually opposite the window, where there is a lot of light. It does not apply to the window the ruling only 
applies when there is no where there is no glass in the in the window. But when the window does have glass insert, sorry, when, but when the window does have glass, the area opposite it has the same ruling in this respect as the areas of the sides. Uh, point 0.8 by torchlight, not being allowed to use a torch. This is because one cannot introduce a torch into holes and crevices, and in addition he will be afraid that it may burn the house. He is therefore unable to examine well if he uses a torch. One may not examine with kindling wood, known as kin in Yiddish, for such wood also has a strong light which burns similarly to the light of a torch. Point 0.9 One may not examine for chametz with a tallow candle, etc., the reason is that he will be afraid that the tallow may drip onto the utensils and he will lose them. Point 10. Or with an oil lamp. This is because one is afraid to put an oil lamp into holes and crevices in case the oil will spill. Uh, I think that's if. One examined for chametz. By torchlight, the examination is ruled as unreliable, even now that it is after the event, and he is therefore required to examine again by the light of a single candle. On the other hand, if one examined by the light of a tallow candle of any kind, the examination is considered reliable now that it is after the event. If one examined with an oil lamp, there are conflicting opinions among the Archonim as to whether, now that it is after the event, the examination is considered reliable. Point 11. But with a wax candle. If one does not have a wax candle, he may examine with one of the candles with which one will be ruled to have fulfilled his obligation once it is after the event. Point 12. Even if they are intertwined i.e. they are certainly considered like a torch if they are stuck together. But one might think that when they are intertwined they are like a single candle. We are therefore taught that even then this is not so. Magen Abraham. It is implied by the Prima Gardim that when... I'll just check that. Prima Gardim. Uh, that whenever one holds two candles together in his hand and does not separate them, one from the other they considered like a torch. If a candle has two wicks with an interval between one wick and the other as tallow candles are now made, occasionally it is considered like a torch. Point 13, with respect to which there are grounds for fear that uh, areas this ruling is as follows, it is unnecessary to mention that places which are used for chametz must be examined for chametz, as that is obvious. However, even a place which is not usually used for chametz all year, but with respect to which there are merely grounds for fear that one may have brought chametz into it on an isolated on an isolated occasion, also requires examination, as explained below. Point fourteen: all the rooms of the house, i.e., even a room where pledges are held. For occasionally one goes into such a room in the middle of a meal in order to return a pledge to its owner. There are therefore grounds for fear that he may have forgotten his bread there. The same ruling applies to all similar rooms. For example, it applies to cellars where fruit, pickled food or cheese, etc. is lying, since it is common to go into such cellars during the meal in order to take the food from them. A room where wood or candles are kept is likewise required to be examined for chametz. It is also common for the attendant to enter such a room during the meal in order to take out candles for light or wood that is needed for the dishes that are being cooked. Point 15. When one does not avail himself, etc. When one avails himself of the wine, a person will go into the storeroom. During the, sorry, when one does not avail himself. So, a storeroom where you don't go to get wine from. So, when one avails himself, point 15, when one avails himself of the wine, a person will occasionally go into the storeroom during the meal with his bread in his hand in order to bring more wine for his meal. Correspondingly, a storeroom which contains another beverage is also required to be examined for chametz in localities where it is usual to drink that liquid. Point 16. When one does not avail himself of the wine. So, of the wine. If one avails himself of the contents of a storeroom but he has a fixed routine whereby he takes from there at one time before the meal, Seventeen. Those areas don't require examination. This is because generally it may be assumed that chametz was not brought into them unless one knows that he... Point 18 are required to be examined. So holes in the walls of the house, projections, are not, are not very low, are required to be examined for chametz. Okay. Point 18. 
they're required to be examined. This is because it is customary to use them if they are less than. The reason is that generally it may be assumed that such holes were not used. However, if one knows that they were used, that they were used for chametz that year, even if one, if even if only once. Are required to be examined in a house where children are to be found. Such holes are required to be examined in all cases, in case the children placed a little chametz there. Point twenty. So if they're less than three hammers from the ground, they're not required to be examined for chametz. Okay. Point twenty. Over the oven. Over the ovens. It is necessary to examine for chametz. It is since it is usual to make use of the area there. It is self understood that all the holes around the ovens are also required to be examined. Point twenty one the roofs of a hut. That is a low building. Point twenty two and of a tall cabinet. What is called an alma or a shaif in Yiddish. It was their custom to make the roof of such a cabinet sloping. In the case of tall cabinets such as ours, however, that have level roofs which are customarily used, the roofs are required to be examined for chametz. If one occasionally uses the inside of a tall cabinet for chametz or for articles which it is customary to take during a meal, one should be all the more concerned about the presence of chametz and therefore the inside must definitely be examined for chametz. Point 23. These roofs are not suitable. Roofs are not suitable. The roofs of their homes were level and it was customary to use them. It was therefore necessary to examine them for chametz. As for our ceilings, which were underneath the sloping roof, it is customary to make make use of a ceiling. It must be, if it is customary to make use of a ceiling, it must be examined for chametz. For one will occasionally go there in the middle of his meal with his bread in his hand, as described in paragraph above in paragraph 3. However, in view of the fact that an examination there would involve much exertion, it appears that one may be lenient and avoid the, needing, the need for it by selling the chametz that there may be there to a non-Jew together with that place as well. Point 24. A chicken coop. Correspondingly, correspondingly, the floor of a house in which chickens are to be found does not need to be examined for chametz. Nevertheless, one must sweep underneath the bed since a large piece of chametz is occasionally dragged there by the chickens because they are unable to eat it for some other reason. All authorities are agreed that in a place where one eats all year and there are no chickens, one must examine for chametz underneath the benches and tables, since it is common for chametz to fall there. There are authorities who say that even in a house where there are chickens, it is regarded as if there, were def there was definitely chametz there, whenever Pesach was eaten there close to Pesach, since it cannot be that chametz did not fall on the floor. Consequently, one cannot rely on the unverified probability that the chickens will have eaten it and assume that the definite fact that there was chametz there has therefore been rectified. But the house must be examined in accordance with halakhic requirements. 25. The middle of a courtyard. The wording middle of is imprecise as the same ruling applies to the size of the courtyard. The wording is only intended to ruling. Point 26, however, if there was definitely, however, it does not apply if there was definitely chametz there. When there was definitely chametz there, we do not rely on this reasoning, but require the place to be examined. This is because one cannot rely on an, on an unverified probability that a definite factor has been rectified. One must certainly be concerned that chametz has remained in a place where one puts geese in their coop and places a vessel containing oats and barley before them outside the coop. Then, seeds fall outside the vessel as a result of their eating and they are unable to eat from there. It is therefore definitely, un definitely necessary to examine for chametz in such a case, as in view of the fact that the seeds are soaked in water, they are fully classed as chametz. Point 27. It does not. Um, 27. It does not apply if there was definitely chametz there. Uh, the Magen, Avra Magen Avraham who is of the opinion that if one brought chametz into such a place a long time before Pesach, but close to Pesach he avoided chametz dropping there, it is unnecessary to examine the place for chametz. He writes that it may be the entire 30-day period prior to Pesach is describable as close to Pesach. On the other hand, the Mekor Chaim is of the opinion that only chametz, which was definitely there on the night of the 14th of Nisan, after the time when one must examine for chametz has arrived, is classed as chametz, for which an examination is required, as only then do we not rely on the probability that birds will have eaten it. However, 
If we only know that Chametz was definitely there that before that night, it is not described as Chametz that was definitely there, and it is therefore unnecessary to examine for it. Point 28, on the other hand. So the Ramah, on the other hand, it is stated below. Uh, now have written lengthily to reconcile this contradiction. As regards the halakha to be followed, several Akronim are agreed that it is forbidden to throw chametz into one's own courtyard or into a courtyard held in common with others, relying on the probability that it will be eaten by ravens or other birds. Even if one did throw chametz there, so that it is now after the event. It is necessary to examine for the chametz and dispose of it. However, one is permitted to throw his chametz into an ownerless area that serves for public use such as a street, and declare the chametz ownerless before the time when chametz will become prohibited has arrived. Then, even if the ravens will not eat it and it will remain in existence until after the time when chametz will become prohibited, this will not bother us since it will already have left his possession. This is comparable to a case where one sells chametz to a non-Jew before the time when it will become prohibited. Point 29. May nullify the remaining chametz in his heart. This must be done in case chametz rolled away there in the hole. Even if there is definitely chametz there, the nullification is also of avail. Leaving such chametz is not regarded like concealing chametz in a pit, in which case the chametz is not ruled as disposed of, since one did not put the chametz there with a deliberate action. See below section 436, paragraph 1, as whether it is permit, as to whether it is permitted to benefit from chametz like this after Pesach. Point 30. So covering a hole between, in the wall between Jew and a non-Jew, the non-Jew may conclude that witchcraft, etc., aye, because of the fact that the Jew is searching in holes at night by candlelight. Nevertheless, on the morrow, on the day of the 14th of Nisan, he should examine the holes by daylight, such uh, as the non-Jew will, will not come to be suspicious of his intentions because of this. Point 31, come to be in danger. Although people who are on a mitzvah mission do not come to harm, this situation is different in circumstances where danger is common. Despite the fact that the sages exempted one from examining for chametz in such a hole at night, for the reasons stated, nullification is nevertheless, is nevertheless required. The acronym write that even where definite chametz is involved, it is unnecessary to examine for it there at night, but one should do so by day by daylight. Nullification is definitely required in such a case, as explained above. Point 32 were used for chametz, so if the holes of a wall were used for chametz. If it, what that is, if it was usual to use the holes for chametz, but it is not definitely known that there was chametz there now. Point 33. Uh, even if the heap does not have a height of three handbreadths, which is the range of a dog's digging. That is, if the chametz is still within the range of a dog's digging. A dog smells the smell of chametz up to three handbreadths away, and we should therefore have been concerned that a dog may search for it during Pesach and uncover it. Even so, it is unnecessary. Point 34. It is unnecessary to examine. Nevertheless, one must nullify it in his heart in case there is chametz there, and because of it he will transgress the prohibition against having chametz in one's possession. If one did nullify the chametz by the time when chametz became prohibited, the Olat Shabbat is of the opinion that he must search for chametz there with a hoe and a pig. See so the base mayor who writes that according to the view of Rashi and the run, the ruling of the Olat Shabbat is correct. But according to the view of the Tosafot, the correctness of his ruling is doubtful. See there. Point 35, danger from a scorpion. Examining a heap involves danger from a scorpion. Oh, sorry. This only applies in a place where scorpions are common. It may be that in a place where snakes are common, one is required to examine for chametz in such a heap, as danger is not so common where snakes are involved. Magan Abraham and other Akronim. Akronim. See what we have written in section 104, that in a place where snakes kill, they have the same ruling as scorpions. Point 36. After one has completed his, his examination. While one is examining for chametz, we are not afraid of danger, as then he is on a mitzvah mission, even if he is searching for a needle as well. And people who are on a mitzvah mission are not harmed. This occurs with the ruling that if one says this seller should be for this seller should be for charity in order that my son will live, he is regarded as fully righteous, even though he is he also has his benefit in mind. Uh, point thirty-seven. He must take it out of there. Ah, so this is still in the heap. If one did not do this and Pesach passed with it, still in his possession, then even though he nullified it, it is forbidden. This accords with the ruling for all chametz for which Pesach passed with it, still in one's possession, as given in section 448, paragraph 5. 
Point 38, he should nullify it in his heart. The nullification is a rabbinical requirement. For fear that the chametz covered by the heat may become uncovered during the festival, and he will then transgress the prohibition that chametz should not be seen in one's possession. According to Torah law, however, he will not transgress at all, as long as the chametz remains, un remains covered. By Torah law, it is only forbidden to conceal chametz with a deliberate action. But in this case, there is no transgression of any Torah prohibition as the heat fell over the chametz of its own accord. There are authorities who say that he is obliged to nullify the chametz according to Torah law. Otherwise, even if he does not intend at all to uncover during the festival what is underneath the heap, he will nevertheless transgress Torah law because of the prohibition that chametz should not be found in one's possession. Just as when one concealed chametz initially. According to these authorities, if he did not nullify the chametz by the time when chametz became prohibited, he is obliged to uncover the chametz covered by the heap in order to dispose of it, now that it is no longer in his power to nullify it. On the other hand, if a large heap fell onto the chametz, so that it is impossible to uncover the chametz and it has become lost to him and to everybody else, he is permitted to ignore it according to all authorities, as then it is not describable as his chametz. Point 39. Uh, he should nullify it in his heart, and this is adequate. Uh, if after Pesach, point 39, if after Pesach, the contents of the heap became uncovered, and the chametz was discovered, it is permitted even to be eaten. This is because chametz for which Pesach passed with it, still in one's possession, is only forbidden because of a penalty. The sages imposed this penalty because of its because its owner transgressed a prohibition that chametz should not be seen or should not be found in one's possession, either according to Torah law or rabbinical law, as will be explained in section 448. In the case discussed here, however, he did not transgress at all because of this, because of this chametz and does not deserve to be penalized. Uh, point 40 in a cellar where one arranges, etc. This paragraph relates only to a cellar from which one avails himself of wine for the needs of the meal. For occasionally the attendant will go to the cellar in the middle of the meal with his bread in his hand to bring more wine to the table and, for, and will forget to bring and will forget his bread there. Point 41 is unnecessary to examine more than the highest row. Uh, see the Bior Halacha. Point 42. One is not required to examine the cask of the entire area of the cellar, etc. That is, it is unnecessary to examine all the upper rows which face the ceiling along the length and breadth of the entire cellar. One must only examine the single final row which is opposite the entrance that faces both the ceiling and the entrance and one further row of casks below it, which solely faces the entrance. Point 43. Uh, they are required to be examined, i.e. on the night of the 14th of Nisan, by candlelight. The attendants of synagogues and Batemi Drush do not observe the requirement to examine them for chametz at night, but they merely sweep them well during the day. They act improperly and must be admonished about their obligation to... To them. If one transgressed and did not examine a synagogue or a Beit Midrash on the night of the 14th of Nisan, 14th on the day of the 14th by daylight initially, and does not need to examine it by candlelight, this is because it is customary to make many windows in these buildings so that they have abundant light and therefore the, their ruling, the ruling in their case is the same as the ruling for a veranda which is given in paragraph 1. On the other hand, according to what we have written above in subparagraph 7, that if there is glass in the windows, even what is actually opposite the window no longer has the same ruling as veranda, it follows that in the case of these buildings, also it is necessary to open the windows when one examines the buildings by day by sunlight. Point 44. Having in mind. Yes, if you sweep your room on the 13th of the sun, having in mind to examine it for comments. 44. The meaning of this ruling is as follows. It goes without saying that ordinarily the room is not presumed to have remained in the same hole. Even if one examined by candlelight in the holes and the crevices, he must also examine the room again so that one person's examination should not be at a different time than another person's examination. All this follows from the words of the of the Trumata Deshen 
Rabbi Yisrael Isalim. Um, Trumat Hadeshin. Um, all this follows from the words of the Trumat Hadeshin in the name of the Mordechai. Halachic Digest of the Talmud and Early Authorities by Rabbi Mordechai ben Hillel Ashkenazi. According to what we have written above, in paragraph 1, subparagraph 1, one should in any case not rely on the examination by day, even if it was done by candlelight, since a candle does not illuminate as much by day as it does by night. Point 46. So the Rama says everyone must sweep his rooms before the examination. This is because they cannot be examined properly without being swept. It is the practice to sweep the entire house and the rooms which require examination on the day of the 13th of Nisan. So... That one will be able to, to do the examination at the beginning of the night of the 14th, in, in conformance with the halakha as stated in section 431, paragraph 1. It is the practice at the time of the examination to take feathers and sweep with them thoroughly where there are holes and crevices in order to drag the chametz into out of there with the feathers. Point 47. Uh, sorry. Point forty seven. Um, the pockets of slates into which Khamis is put occasionally. Okay. Even if one maintains that he is certain that Khamis was not put into them, this cannot be relied on. This is normally need to be attentive about the matter, and in view of this, he is not mindful about it. Therefore, they must nevertheless be examined. The public does his merely to shake out the pockets of the pockets at the time when they come. However, it is proper for one to examine them at the time when he must examine the chametz. Nevertheless, even if we want to examine them, then he must shake them out again at the time when he disposes of chametz, in case he again put chametz in them from the chametz of which he ate after the examination. Uh, point 48 are required to be examined. So the pockets of sleeves uh, are required. children of the household must be examined.